Hello guys, today I will be discussing and exposing the pagan trinity concept. So let's get into it. The trinity is a false blasphemous doctrine which states that God, the Father, the Creator, is God, that which we know. It also states that Christ the Son is God. And it also states that the Holy Spirit is God. Basically saying that all three entities slash beings are all God in a trinity together as one. I've said this in other videos, but I will say it again. The Catholic Church is one big pagan church in disguise. There's a long history of the Catholics trying to please and keep the pagan masses in their church. So it's no secret that they often adapt pagan tradition, concepts, ideologies, traditions, and so on from the pagans. This trinity concept is just another case of that. And likewise, they have caused many Christians to commonly and ignorantly adapt the concept of the trinity. Not understanding that when they do this, again, they're lining the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit up to be much like the relationships of the pagan gods in these three trinity god situations, thinking that it's holy. And so I'm here to tell you today that the trinity is a pagan union, and it's a pagan concept which dates back as far as ancient pagan cultures. There are lots of pagan cultures which use the trinity concepts for their gods. Now these are in no particular order, Here's Egyptian Trinity. Here's the Hindu Trinity. Here's the Chinese Trinity. Here's the Greek Trinity. Of course, there are more, but for sake of the video, I'll stop here. The point being, there are so many cultures using this concept of a Trinity God. And it does not come from the Bible at all. The concept of Trinity is designed to play on your intelligence. On the surface, the term Trinity may sound safe. It may even sound like it's describing the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because in general, it sounds like you're saying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are separate individuals that function in the same spirit. But it's not saying that. That's not what the Trinity is referring to. If you look at the diagram, it tells you on the outside of the diagram that they're separate individuals, right? Okay, the outside says, let's deal with the first concept that they're separate. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not the Father. We know that to be true. So many see this and stop there. And they just accept this concept because they think it's describing the same thing that they believe in. But you have to look deeper. Let's take it a step further and look at the inside of the diagram, which shows you, and this is what takes it off the road and brings it astray from Christ. Reading from the outside going in, it shows you that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, which we know that's a lie. The diagram is showing you that they're separate, but they're not only just separate individuals with purpose and instruction from the one Godhead, like you would think, but they are separate individuals and they are separate Godheads. And this is where the perversion comes in. There is only one God. The Bible tells you that. So it's not the same. This Trinity union or concept is not describing the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's actually perverting the relationship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, equating them and aligning them with the pagan gods. So I stated this earlier, but in a minute I will explain why attaching the concept of Trinity to the faith is trickery. To line up the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with pagan doctrine, giving them pagan unions, ultimately making their relationship a pagan union. Now let's look at the definition of Trinity. Okay, I'm going to look at two definitions. The first definition comes from Merriam-Webster Dictionary. The unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
as three persons in one Godhead, according to Christian dogma. So according to this definition, it's three persons in one Godhead. Now let's look at the other definition, and it comes from Wikipedia, which I usually don't look up definitions in Wikipedia, but it kind of went in depth about something that I want to discuss. One God existing in three co-equal, co-eternal, co-substantial divine persons. And it goes on to say God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, hypostasis, sharing one essence, substance, nature. So basically, it's saying that they're all sharing the same nature, which is being a God. And let's look up that word, co-equal. When you look up co-equal, it's an adjective that means equal with one another in rank, size, ability, power, etc. So now that we looked it up, it's not just hearsay. It actually means three Godheads in one. And this definition fully confirms that. If you notice, they said God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So there's no speculation there. It's a fact. So when you say Trinity and you're referring to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you're saying that all three of them have the same rank, size, ability, power, and everything that these definitions are explaining. Which we all know that's a straight lie from the pits of hell. So when you're adapting this Trinity concept to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just know you're going to be held accountable for this stuff, especially if you don't change it and get in line with the Creator and what He says in the book. So now that we established that the Trinity is pagan, let's talk about the real relationship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and how we fit into all of this. Although God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit function in the same ways and in the same order, and even in the same spirit, they are each separate entities slash beings. So let me double back a second and say this, because people look at things differently sometimes, and I just want to cover it all. Let's look at it from this perspective. Even if you thought the inside of the diagram read this way, God is the Father, God is the Son, God is the Holy Spirit. Even if that's what you thought, um, and I can see why some people might can go into that because God created all of them. So, you know, it's not too far fetched. If he want to be them, he can. And this is true. However, it all comes down to what he has given us to follow and believe. And a triune God, a Trinity God is not what he's given us to follow and believe in. The Bible speaks of only one God, a mediator and the Holy Spirit. And they're all separate entities slash beings, which two of them have separate purposes to fulfill for God himself. The Father, the Creator himself, is the only God we were given in the Bible. He didn't give us Christ as a God. Christ did not come here as a God. Christ came here as a man. So let's not get off into what if it says that and what if it says this. Let's accept things for what they are. Christ is Christ, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and God is God. Anything else would be hearsay, assumption, you lean into your own understanding, and last but not least, you straying away from the Bible and being in error. And so again, these are three separate entities slash beings, and two of them have a God-given purpose. And I'm about to explain all of that now. Okay, so let's start with God the Father, the Creator. He is God all by Himself in His glory. He is the only true God there is, and He will not share His glory with another, and that's a given. His purpose is His plan according to His will. By the way, bear with me for the more advanced people. This is all going somewhere. Next we have Christ, the Son, who is a humble creation of God the Creator. He is also a subordinate to the Creator in a sense that He's created to serve a purpose for the Creator. 
His purpose is to be mediator between man and God. At least that's his main purpose that we were told about. And finally, we have the Holy Spirit, which is also a humble creation of God, the Father, as well as the Holy Spirit is a subordinate of the Creator. The Holy Spirit serves a slew of purposes for the Most High Creator, some given, some not given. We all know that all things were created for the enjoyment of the Creator. That includes spirits, principalities, and everything. The Holy Spirit is included in that as well. The word Trinity is nowhere mentioned in the Holy Bible. So there is no such thing as a Holy Trinity. But you will find the word unity in the Bible at least three times. And it is usually in reference to the unity of the faith, spirit, and our truth. And so now we're going to look at the word unity. So the root of unity is uni. And uni means having or consisting of one. And unity means the state of being united or joined as a whole. So at best, the relationship is a unity of the fate relationship. Unity consisting of one, which we serve the one true God. And what makes it a unity relationship is that the relationship is predicated on us being unified in the faith. The many members of the body come and are joining together in spirit and in truth to serve the one true Godhead as a whole. And that's basically the unity and the fate relationship. In conclusion, a Trinity God violates everything the Creator stands for and it breaks the first commandment. Preaching or accepting the Trinity version of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is another gospel. It is not what we've been given in the Bible.